Well, here we are. We are at Roosevelt National Park in Medora, uh, North Dakota. And it is a super hot day today. It's the hottest it's been since we've been here. Um, it's like 85 and it's gonna get a little bit higher. Uh, they say that a heat wave is coming this weekend. And um, we drove about four and a half hours or a little bit less uh, straight and um, on really deserted roads for miles. We had the roads all to ourselves. It was great. Surrounded by just flat land and tons of bales of hay or hay bales everywhere. Uh, really beautiful country and um, uh, we'll be starting our first hike today. Uh, it's uh, the Pyramid uh, Canyon Trail here. And this is a beautiful view. And then we'll head up to the south unit of uh, Teddy Roosevelt National Park where there is uh, more wildlife to see. So I think the trail starts over here or over there. I think it's over here. So. Yeah, we'll be here for two days, so come follow me and let's go for a hike. Happy trails! Alright, well, here it goes. I'm going to attempt to uh, climb up this mountain. Beautiful view. This uh, painted canyon reminds me a lot of the painted desert in Petrified Forest National Park in Arizona, uh, minus the trees. And we were there in December of 2019, so many of the petrified. Uh, rocks uh, were snow camped, snow capped I should say, um, they looked really beautiful. So, yeah. yeah. We started from that up little, there. See that little rooftop? It's a very short trail. Yeah. But All steep. Right. Very let's, steep. Let's try to go down. Be careful. I would usually be in front of her to catch her if she fell. And I think she could do this on her own. Balance. It's important to have balance and to have a good core and to have good sturdy hiking shoes. All right, that way.
Wow, it's been a long day. We've been up since five in the morning and it's about quarter of six now. And we are at Cottonwood Picnic Area in Theodore Roosevelt um, National Park. And we're having dinner that John just made over there. And um, we had a good day. Um, uh, we, of course, um, hiked one uh, trail, the uh, Painted uh, Canyon uh, Nature Trail. And the highlight of the day, I would have to say, would be meeting Miss Team North Dakota, Olivia, and Miss uh, North Dakota 2022, both of them in 2022, Miss North Dakota, uh, Sydney. And it was lovely to talk to them and how they got interested in this and why they're doing it, scholarship money. Uh, Olivia wants to be a doctor. She's a biology major in um, North Dakota University. And Sydney is working on her doctorate in physical therapy, also at the University of North Dakota. So as a retired professor, it was nice to see students uh, doing good things and uh, being positive. So it was, uh, it was just really nice. So now we're just gonna eat our dinner, head uh, to our new ho hotel, and um, prepare for tomorrow. So more hiking at fun at Theodore uh, Roosevelt National Park. Oh, and we did visit his um, cabin, and I also got my Junior Ranger uh, workbook that I'm going to complete, and because I attended the Ranger program, uh, a little talk about his cabin. Um, Ranger Kate signed my book, so I've completed one task, so that's always good. That's the wonderful thing about going to national parks. It's a wonderful way to learn about so many things, culture, people, nature, wildlife, and so much more. See you guys tomorrow. Bye-bye. It's Saturday morning, and here we are. We're back at uh, Theodore Roosevelt National Park. And uh, this morning, we're going to hike uh, the Petrified Forest. Um, we're going to do the, the short loop, which is plus or minus three miles round trip. And this area here, which we're looking at, at one time was the ocean. It was a forest. It was actually a forest first. And then it went underwater, and apparently uh, this looked like the Everglades in Florida. We've been uh, to the Everglades, uh, uh, to Everglades National Park too, and uh, this is all like a forest. And then it went underwater, and um, it left some petrified um, tree stumps, something like this. And um, yeah, so. That's what we're looking at today at a petrified forest that doesn't look much like a forest, but was at one time. And it's also really kind of super hot today. So once again, hats, sunscreen, water, uh, pack lots of water. And um, this is uh, what we're going to have. Take a night, take in the wonderful... the sounds of the chirpy grasshoppers. I can hear them. That's the other wonderful thing about hiking in a national park is the wonderful sounds that you will hear. Just really wonderful. All right, let's go. Trying to capture the flying grasshopper. Well, we hiked down about a mile. Uh, 
um, through some pretty uh, steep terrain and then a flat uh, path surrounded by grasslands. And we are here where the petrify wood is. All this, the tree stumps of these trees, I don't know, billions of years ago, millions of years ago, that were underwater are the only to survive because of the minerals in the ocean water. In the swampy water. In the swamp, okay, in the swampy waters, yes. And the terrain here is very diverse. And we're gonna be going up there for some more petrified wood. So we'll just go back out here and then hike our way up there. More petrified forest. And I hiked up this way. And here I am atop one of these, I think they're called buttes, these little mounds, these little mountains. It's a really beautiful day. And there is John over there. We're really enjoying this hike, but we're not done yet. We're going to be going up around up there somewhere. See you there. Well, made it to the top. That wasn't hard at all. It's just so beautiful that you just want to get to the top. And now we have some grasslands. I think we've been hiking maybe uh, two, a little over two miles. And it's just really beautiful here. Very quiet. We've seen a couple of hikers. Um, Theodore Roosevelt National Park is pretty isolated. I think it's one of the least traveled national parks, um, but it's just so beautiful and lots of hiking here. And it's summertime and it's really, really quiet. Um, and maybe some people prefer to just do the drive, the scenic drive. There's a 24 mile uh, scenic drive to stay in your car. I think that's in the south unit of the park. And then in the north unit, another scenic 26, eight mile uh, drive. And you can still see the sights, but you won't be moving. You'll be stationary and you'll be using up a lot of gas. Um, but gas is not too bad here. Here in, we're staying in Dickinson and gas is 399. So that's a win. Hope you're enjoying the video. Well, we're heading back. And that's where we hiked up to. And now we came down, but we have to go up. on the trail to get back to the trailhead. And it's getting really hot. 
I'd say it's about 12.30. We've been here maybe two hours. But we have to climb up there to get back down. Wow, we don't have to go up that steep uh, climb. We just have to um, go up here to the right. recommended uh, we spent I think it was three and a half hours we did uh, a little over four miles I think the three or three point seven five and um, now it's a uh, 91 degrees it's hot and now we're gonna go on a scenic drive in search of buffaloes bisons oh my Another buffalo sighting. Wonderful. We just saw a single bison. discouraging word and the skies are not cloudy all day boy such amazing beasts Let's see. there they are they're not blocking the road today they're just enjoying this beautiful Saturday wonderful Thanks for the show. Bye-bye. Well, 
our search for bison was a success. They once again did not disappoint. We're on the road and we first spotted this big bison in the middle of the road uh, with oncoming cars, very slowly of course, uh, both ways. And I managed to get a fantastic uh, picture of this huge bison, male bison. And then we continue on the road and there on a hill on one of the rock formations was just a herd and they were just hanging out on this beautiful, super hot 91 degree Saturday afternoon. So another successful day in the national parks. And I also got my junior ranger patch and batch. I completed the booklet here and that was a lot of fun. And now we are on a very uh, small uh, trail, Wind Cave Trail. And we're gonna go up here and then up there to the top. And that's where, see the top over there, John? Yeah. And uh, that's where we can see the Little Missouri River. So maybe we'll get a little breeze. And I guess that's why they call it Wind Cave here because there's a breeze. Well, here we are on top of uh, the Wind Cave. Wind Canyon. Oh, is it Wind Canyon? Not Wind Cave. My 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 mistake. I was I thought it was odd because Wind Cave National Park is in South Dakota. Wind Canyon. Yep. So we made it up here. Uh, it's a very short hike up. Uh, and there's Little Missouri River. It looks a bit dry. Um, it doesn't rain much in this part of the world. We learned at Wind Cave National Park during a tour of the natural entrance to the cave that um, South Dakota, I think he said, gets about nine inches of rain a year. So, yeah, they don't get a lot of rain around here, but it's all very beautiful. And the breeze and the wind. It feels good up here. Very nice. And um, we spotted a, a wild horse, a feral horse earlier. just told us that they spotted a herd of wild horses but from afar it was hard to see them when they were up here yeah super nice very nice wow can you see them there on top of the hill wild horses there are wild horses here in the park and we were just taking an easy drive and John spotted the horses. Oh, they're so wonderful. Look at that. Wildlife is just so beautiful. And there they are putting on a wonderful show for us. And here's another buffalo. We're at the north unit of first sighting of a buffalo. I wonder how much he weighs. Hey there everyone. Well, it's Sunday, July 31st, and today is our last day at Theodore Roosevelt National Park. And we're going to spend the day in the north unit um, of the park. And the north unit of the park is 
about an hour's drive from South Unit. Um, so, and we were excited to see a buffalo. One of the first things we saw as we entered the park um, was another buffalo, a lone buffalo, you know, just moving along slowly. And um, today, uh, we're going to do a couple of hikes today. The first one is a, a small hike. Uh, it's the Little Mo Nature Trail. And then there's another hike we're going to do later. But yeah, so it's our last day here, so we're going to enjoy it. And um, follow me. Come this way. Well, here we are on the nature trail. And um, we have a little guidebook that we got in the um, visitor center. And what is this, John? This is the buffalo berry. You can see the little berries here. They make you can make jam with them. Oh, so that's what a buffalo berry looks like. And there's thorns on this tree, so the animals have a hard time eating them. So it leaves more for us to pick. All right. Okay. Let's continue and see what else we learn. Here's another little interesting thing to know about this butte. Well, this is called the battleship butte because it looks like a battleship. And if you get closer on the bottom, there's the cannonball concretions exposed at the base that also make it look like a boat. Yeah, and we've been climbing some of these buttes while we've been here at the park. But that one would be pretty difficult to, to conquer. I would say so. Because it's got very... Uh, uh, Steep. Everything steep, is steep. Every, yeah. Very steep side. Yes, that's okay. Right. All right. There are many kinds of plants in the park, and the cactus is one of them. Yes, this is the prickly pear cactus, and the Plains Indians used to use. After they took out the prickle prickers. They used to eat the fruit, and they used to use the other uh, liquids from it for medicinal purposes. See? Isn't that wonderful? We need to learn more about medicinal plants, don't you think? For yep. sure. For Instead sure. of going to the pharmacy. Oh, for everything. Okay. Yes. Well, there's so much more to learn as we continue on this uh, strenuous hike, but it has magnificent views. Look at that. And we can, from here, we can see the Little Mall or the Little Missouri River. Okay, what are we looking at here? We're looking at bentonite. Yeah, it's a blue-gray clay that was formed many, many, many years ago, millions of years ago from the volcanic ash that drifted here from a long distance away. And uh, when it's uh, wet, it's hard to travel on. It's very slippery, slippery when wet. And um, it makes it difficult to uh, travel in the Badlands. Well, you find it all over the place. It's all over the place, and that's why it's always a good idea when you're hiking in the parks to carry with you a hiking stick or a walking stick. 
All right, let's continue. It's a really beautiful day for a hike. The weather is much cooler than it was yesterday and a lot breezier. It's about 80 degrees now. Huh, John, what are we looking at here? Well, it's coal, it's called lignite coal. It's a low grade coal that uh, is throughout this whole region and in past environments in the past it uh, signifies a wet climate so many ah. millions of years ago it was wet and formed this coal that we see wow. now yeah you know you, we see all these textures and types of terrain and rocks and pebbles and we don't know what they are so that's why it's always a good idea to talk to one of the rangers they'll give you some information and uh, to learn a lot oh wow look at this it's multicolored it's like bright like a burnt orange or a red what's this john well it's a pillar it's a rain pillar so you have soft rock and harder rock and erosion erodes the soft rock quicker leaving the hard rock to remain longer so you get these different layers like you see wow you know what thank you so much for sharing that and look what i just discovered and it breaks my heart on this little pillar look what somebody carved you don't do this at a national park or any park you don't deface it you don't vandalize it the park this land belongs to everybody in the world it's public and should be treated with respect but it's disappointing to see but it happens let's go see what else we can learn about. Oh, to the right there, if you show over there, that looks like petrified wood. Oh yeah, see I that? see it, yes. You'll find that the ranger said that there's no rain, uh, uh, petrified wood forest, but you'll find it in certain spots here and there. And this one looks like the one Oh, there. there it is. Yeah, I see it. Careful where you're going. I I'm being I'm being very careful. Yep, there's the petrified wood. Wonderful. Well, here's an example of um, a log step. It makes it easier for people to navigate. Um, you know the pebbles and the rocks. And it also helps to have a walking stick. Um, you can just create your own. We found this at a state park in New Jersey. And I've had this for a couple of years. I keep it in the trunk of the car. So wherever I am, if I feel like hiking, I make sure I have my boots with me and my walking stick. And now we're gonna continue on the trail. Oh, and always remember to stay hydrated. It's very important. Um, and sunscreen and a hiking hat. Okay, we just came down from these buttes. And what can you tell us about these buttes, John? So we get a better view of the different layers. And you see the multicolored layers. This is millions of years in the making. Of erosion of the different layers of clay, sandstone, siltstone, and mudstone, which all have different colors and characteristics, and, and how they're soft or hard, or, mm -hmm. and that would create all the different shapes, but also creates different layers that you see. And all this uh, wonderful grassland and sage bushes. 
and flowers just make it look really wonderful. They complement each other and they coexist peacefully. Oh wow, look at these beautiful sage bushes. Wait, is that a sinkhole I see? One of, the, one of the things you find in the badlands, you know, you don't not only have erosion up above on mountains, but you have erosion below. And when water erodes below the surface, you have collapsed. Um, oh wow! Gr uh, earth, ground. Earth, and you get these sinkholes. Wow! And look at the the pretty daisies. Watch, watch your step. Oh my God! Look at this. It's a good thing he said, watch my step. Okay. Yeah, always look where you're going on a trail. Wow, very nice. Did you hear the sounds of the locusts? And some fly that just went by. Well, today we have a nice view of uh, Little Missouri River or Little Mo River. We first saw it yesterday in um, the south unit of the park when we hiked to the top of Wind Canyon Trail. And I said it was a pretty dry uh, river. So what explains this, John? What, what do we have here? Well, it's it might be a little dry, but it's still flowing. It's still a, a main river in this area. And as you see, it meanders around, curving and, and eroding as it goes. But you can see the river was further off. You can see the edge was over there. But as the river flows, the out, outer sides of the river flows faster and it erodes the uh, outside mm -hmm. of the river. So it moves more to the outside and it curves and bends. So we're on one of those bends right now. Ah. So here, it, because it erodes, there's a cliff going down right now. Oh, see? A and river. It's, it's always changing shape. And a river like runs a through it. Yes. Very nice. Thank you for that information. And you can also see where the animals, you see animal tracks on the other side. Oh, yes. You can see where the animals come to the river to, to drink. Yes, that is, wow. Yep, oh, there they are, the tracks. Mm -hmm. Wonderful, wonderful information. Oh, wow, look, more sage bushes. It's actually silver sage bush. Oh. The American Indians used to burn it for incense for ceremony, but they also used to season their meat with it, and they put it in there as a fragrance for their bath water. Very nice. Very nice. Birdies use it to make their nest. Birds build their nests, and people use it as medicine. Okay. When I taught religions of the world, whoops, my uh, college students, some of them, when we're talking about Native American religions in spirituality and healing class that I taught, um, some of my students share that uh, they would uh, burn sage. In their, you know, uh, dorm rooms or in uh, their off-campus apartments. Okay. Of course, I told them be careful. You don't want to burn out the place. And they left. Well, is this a cottonwood tree? Yeah, it's a cottonwood tree. It uh, grows in the Badlands, and this is what 
people who live there used for to build their shelters and um, even in a harsh winter they say that they would feed the bark to their horses when it was a harsh winter. Wow. But, uh, well, now I know what a cottonwood tree looks like in the summer because remember when we went to White Sands National Park in December of 2019, there were beautiful trees there, but they were bare. Uh, it had dry leaves and they were the winter cottonwood tree. And I love trees. Well, here's the, uh, the Ludomo River from another angle, and it's an oasis for the bison and other wildlife. It doesn't rain much around here. About so how many inches? 15 inches a year. So the water is a place for a feeding ground for all the wildlife and like we pointed out before you can see the the, uh, the trails on the other side and the different uh, animals that come here to drink yeah we don't see any wildlife at this moment but we can hear those very musical loud uh, locusts I haven't seen any fly in the air today, but I guess they're just enjoying the nice weather in the trees. And that's the most cottonwood tree. Yeah. Really beautiful. Okay. This is a colorful bush. I see some red berries up there. Yeah, it's called the skunk bush sumac. The uh, Plains Indians use uh, for food, medicine, and raw materials. Mm. So they use the tart berries to make a drink similar to lemonade, the roots to make baskets, and dried berries to treat illness. Wow, look at all those uses from one little bush. organic berry and bush. Who needs a pharmacy? Exactly. Okay. Let's see what other trees have medicinal uh, value uh, here. This is an interesting tree. It seems to be half dead and half alive. What, yeah. what, what kind of tree is this? There's a lot of cavities in it where birds and can make Nests, birds and owls, and uh, insects can burrow in there. So, so this tree, tree of life. it's yeah, I was gonna say it's the tree of life. It's a dead yeah. tree that's full of life. Yeah, even in death, there is life, and that's why the evergreens and pine trees, even if the, in the dead of winter, they're alive and green. Wow, it's a very interesting tree. Maybe I'll paint this tree. Buck brush. Oh, what's, look at this one. It's, it's got like little pink or reddish buds. What's this called? Well, it's got like little green reddish buds called buck brush. And you can use those berries to reduce fever. And I'm guessing birds like to eat them too? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. I think that's why we hear a lot of little birds singing in this area. Because this is their food source. Hmm. Very nice. Here, here's another bush. It's with... called the Missouri Willow. Uh-huh. So the Plains Indians use the inner bark for effective pain-killing chemical. So and it's a pain reliever. It has flexible limbs that they use for weaving also, weaving baskets. I could see that. But it's got a pain-killing chemical in the sap. 
Well, that good is to know. good to know. Tell your doctors about this uh, this instead medicinal of plant the cotton, instead of the using. Willow. There you go. All right. So much to learn in this national park and in all parks with all kinds of plants with so many purposes to heal, to eat, and much more. Well, I hope you enjoyed that spontaneous tour of uh, the Little Mo Nature Trail. We had no idea we were going to be creating this video with so much information about the diversity of life here in the Badlands, the terrain, the plant life, the animal life. Uh, even though we didn't see any wildlife, doesn't mean that they're not here. Um, and we really enjoyed it. So I hope that you've learned quite a bit. And I hope that you're, it inspires you to visit parks, national parks especially, but your local parks, um, your regional parks, um, your state parks. And it's always great to go to the visitor center to pick up information. Like if we hadn't stopped in the visitor center, we wouldn't have gotten this nice little booklet, the Little Mo Nature Trail, that explains everything that we talked about and that John uh, was able to share with you. And they also have here a little note that help us save resources. Please return this brochure uh, to the box when you finish hiking. And I think that's great. Um, we'll turn it back in and someone else can use it. And if we want a copy, all we have to do is get on the website to download it. Um, yeah, and so always make sure that you pick up trail maps. And so our next trail is going to be the Cap Rock Cooley Nature Trail in Blue. So um, follow me. It's really cool day and it's a nice breeze. So it makes hiking um, more comfortable. We're at the Cap Rock Coley Trail. Uh, this trail is, is 4.2 miles, but we're not going to go 4.2 miles. We're going to um, do the nature trail, uh, the Cap Rock Coley Nature Trail. And so here we go. Entering the steps here. Lots of different kinds of grasses. Wow, this looks like a shelf. It's iron impregnated sandstone, which is harder rock than the rock above and below it. So and here's, uh, here's another one. So the soft rock erodes more quickly than the iron embedded sandstone. Wow. So it leaves you with a little shelf. Here are some more. Oh, here's another one. This is all called differential erosion. Differential erosion. Wow. Very nice. Thank you for sharing that information. And look at up there in the distance. Looks like a, okay, you probably can't see it uh, too well from afar, but there are pieces of petrified wood. Uh, what kind of wood was the, that? The lighter specks of a petrified the hillside wood. Okay. Uh, is petrified wood. And, and what kind of trees were they at there. one time? They're either magnolia or what's the other one? Uh, 
Uh, it was either magnolia trees or cypress. Okay, and they, they're millions of years old. 55 million years old. 55 million years old. Can you believe it? Just wonderful. Oh, and I can hear the locusts. I can see one flying. Yep. Uh, and I think this might be the north facing part of these fields because there are more trees here. So, and it's cooler here. The south facing um, is more desert like and not a lot of plant life. But this is the ones with the most trees. Okay, these uh, are actually called slopes, and I guess not buttes. And you see, like, it looks like there's cave entry, small little openings. They're pipes? Yeah, they're caused by, it's caused by rain er erosion. Uh-huh. Wow. It's very, um, this is natural art. It's just beautiful. Wow, it's so nice to enter a cool part of this trail, meaning uh, it's not hot. It's, this is what they call it, like the uh, north, uh, like it's like a forest. North facing slope. The north facing slope. Has all the vegetation and the uh, shade. Right. So, so it's cooler. It's cooler and more things thrive, green. And the south facing um, slope is more desert like so which is not, does not grow. that stuff that's facing south and this is north over here so so if you need to there's all different kinds of three different types of juniper juniper trees yeah, junipers all around. evergreens so it, it's nice to feel it like also smells like juniper yeah you can smell it right yep uh, it's, it's amazing um, the, how you the, can change from one environment to the next. Yeah, exactly. It's like in that other area where the water created an, an oasis. This is like an oasis. Well, you know what? It reminds me of the Guanica Dry Forest yes. in the southern part of Puerto Rico which is so hot, but there is so much vegetation and plant life. And I don't think, uh, you know, scientists have been able to figure that out. Okay, here we go. And we're going to enjoy this forest for a little bit longer. Probably bison. And here are more trucks. Yeah, probably bison and Yeah, those are definitely bison because they're like four to six inches. Yeah. Or it could be dinosaur. I don't think so. Okay. So long as there are tracks and nothing more. And there's a buzzing fly buzzing around me. Uh, that's why it's always good, of course, to, you know, spray your exposed arms and legs and, and face with uh, insect repellent. Um, and they won't bother you. Our arms and legs are sprayed and we're good. They're just buzzing around. And here is bison poop. And we've seen a lot of, lot, well, not a lot, but enough. Some are not so fresh and others are really old, almost petrified.
end of our hike at Cap Rock Coley Nature Trail. And there's the Cap Rocks right behind you. Wait until I show the Cap Rock. Uh, and that's the right south side. In the middle of Cap Rock Coley Nature Trail, and this is a valley. And here to my right is the north facing side, and this is where there's much more vegetation and trees and a lot of green, and that's the area where we enter the forest. And here to my right, um, is the south facing uh, side and this is more desert like where a lot doesn't grow and then see right in the middle here is the valley which will get filled with water when it rains but right now it's dry and the water flows in the valley the water flows in the valley hence the word coulee coulee c-o-u-l-e-e -E is a French word that means flow and that's what was called the area was called Cooley by a French uh, fur, fur traders or fur yes. traders and according to legend and history the name Cooley stuck so it's just been really a wonderful uh, hike and a wonderful time in uh, the northern unit of Theodore Roosevelt National Park. So this is our last day and we've had an amazing time here and before we arrived here we were um, at Wind Cape and uh, Wind Cape uh, National Park in South Dakota. We were also uh, at Custer State Park in South Dakota. We really had a wonderful uh, uh, driving um, you know, we drove through the Black Hills, also in South Dakota. And we were in the Badlands National Park. Yeah, and we, we started with Badlands, uh, Badlands uh, National Park, where uh, you will see uh, from the video that I created about our wonderful hiking adventures at Badlands National Park. And I, there's also a video uh, with our adventures at Wind Cave and Custer uh, State Park and then this video here. So it's just been a wonderful, wonderful time. I hope that you've enjoyed the videos uh, and the show and that you've learned and I hope that you've been uh, inspired to uh, go for a hike and visit a national park. Oh, and don't forget to participate in the junior range programs because you'll earn that badge and patch. And the most important thing is you will learn so much. So off we go to uh, a picnic area where we're going to uh, make our dinner for tonight. Happy trails. Happy trails.